television producers and publishers have discovered that sorcery sells. And they're capitalizing on this. And they are producing a vast array of movies and shows and books that all make witchcraft seem to be fun for kids. And I think that parents are naive when they see no connection between the popularity of Harry Potter and the popularity of real witchcraft. Revelation 18, 23 says, through sorcery, all nations were deceived. Welcome back to part three of a five-part series on witchcraft and the Bible, a rather spooky topic, but a very important one, one that we need to think about in the light of the incredible and explosive growth of witchcraft today. The title of this segment is called, What's Wrong with Wicca? There are a lot of books that are telling us that Wicca witchcraft is probably one of the fastest growing religions in the country today and a lot of people are exploring it. Well, what does witchcraft or Wicca witchcraft, modern witchcraft, what is it really teaching? Uh, well, it has a lot of beliefs, and I certainly can't go into all of them today, but I'm gonna just cover some of the main ones, and this first one may surprise you, but it is a love for nature. I have a book here called The Truth About Witchcraft Today, and the very first page here says that witchcraft encourages a love for the earth a love for the earth, and a love for nature. Now, obviously, there isn't really anything wrong with that, is there? Uh, there's nothing wrong with appreciating nature and having a love for the planet uh, that we see around us. Uh, in spite of its problems, planet Earth is definitely still very, very beautiful, and that picture is a gorgeous picture, isn't it, on the screen? Makes you want to go there, doesn't it? Makes, us, makes you want to be outside. Uh, these next couple of slides are, are just beautiful pictures of nature. If you look around us, the world is filled with wonder. The trees, the birds, the, the flowers, the rivers. There's just so many things. When I was a kid, I used to love to spend time outdoors, and I still do. And witchcraft also says that we need to get outside, we need to go out into nature, and we need to spend time out there. In this book, Teen Witch, Wicca for a New Generation, there's a lot of emphasis on this, the importance of getting outside. It says here on page five that witchcraft is a nature-based religion, and it says it encourages a close connection with people and animals and plants. We commune with streams, sky, fire, trees, animals, and rocks. And I believe personally that one of the appeals of modern witchcraft is that it's telling people to get out of the cities, away from the stress, and to go out into nature and spend some time with the healing influences of, uh, of the creation around us or the world around us. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But what when you go deeper and look at what witchcraft is really saying, uh, there's a problem, and the problem is that witchcraft, Wicca witchcraft, goes too far, and it actually says that the things of nature are not just a manifestation of God's power, but nature is, is God himself or herself. Uh, here's a book called The Truth About Witchcraft by Scott Cunningham, and it says here there is a power in the universe this power is the force behind the wonders that the early humans encountered. The earth, the solar system, the stars, all that is manifest is a product of this power. And then it says this power is also within all things. It is within humans, plants, stones, colors, shapes, and sounds. And basically what Wicca teaches is that the power that's in nature, uh, that power is divine, and we can access that power, and we can channel it supposedly for good purposes. That is, that is what they teach. So they say that nature is not just uh, a manifestation of power, but it is full of power, and that nature basically is, is God. Nature is God himself or herself, uh, mother nature, the God or the goddess. One of the most well-known verses in the Bible, the very first passage is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and this is what the Bible says about nature. It says that in the beginning, what happened? In the beginning, God did what? 
He created the heavens and the earth. God definitely wants us to enjoy nature. Nothing wrong with that. And this was part of the appeal of, of witchcraft is the appeal of getting out into nature. But witchcraft, Wicca, goes too far and it makes a God out of nature. And the Bible is very, very clear that there is a difference between the creator and his, his creation. God reveals himself to us through nature. He reveals himself, himself through the sunsets and the plants and the the flowers and the, the beautiful animals and all the wonderful things that he has made. He reveals himself to us, but he is not those things. I have a friend of mine that has a, has a poster on his wall. It's a beautiful poster of a sunset. And it says, two fundamental facts of human enlightenment are this. Number one, there is a God. And number two, you are not him. You are not that God. There is a definite difference between the creature and the creator. The classic verse that illustrates the problem with Wicca is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 25. If you have a Bible, if you'd like to read this text with me, Romans chapter 1, verse 25, it says here that the nations of old, and it's happening today, it says they changed the truth of God for a lie, and it says they worshiped and they served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forevermore. Now, do you see that? It says that the problem is that people worship the creature instead of the creator who is blessed, blessed forevermore. The Bible says that the first being who ever turned to, from the worship of the creator to the worship of the creature was an angel named Lucifer. When you read the book of Isaiah, it says that Lucifer has fallen from heaven. O son of the morning, he was a beautiful, holy angel. And he was the first one who turned away from the creator and he turned to himself. It says in another Bible book in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15 and 16, God said about Lucifer, he said, you were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until sin was found in you, until you sin. Now, this is very important to understand is that a witchcraft does not believe in a devil. They don't believe in a real devil. In, in this book, Teen Witch, page 14, they come right out. And Silver Ravenwolf says, we do not believe in Satan. A lot of people think that witches are uh, Satan worshipers, but they're not. They don't believe in the devil at all. They don't believe there is, there is a Satan. And they also don't believe in sin. Scott Cunningham in his book, The Truth About Witchcraft, on page 48, he says, we do not believe, witches do not believe in sin. That there is no sin. There is no sin. There's no uh, devil. There's no fall. All of this is just something that the Christians teach in the Christian religion, but it's not something they believe. They don't believe any of it. And yet the Bible says when you really read it carefully, when you study the book, especially the book of Revelation, it tells us that Lucifer was up there, that he sinned, that he went against God, that there was a battle, and eventually it says in Revelation chapter 12 that he was cast out. He was cast down to this earth, and his angels, it says, were cast out with him. In Revelation chapter 12, if you look at this verse, verses, verse 9, and I believe in the Bible. I believe every word that's in this book. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, says that the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So witchcraft uh, loves nature, but they think that nature is God. And that's a problem. Witchcraft doesn't believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth. That is a problem. Witchcraft doesn't believe in a real devil. That is a problem. Witchcraft doesn't believe in sin. That is a problem. And the Bible says in Revelation that when Lucifer rebelled and when he was kicked out of heaven and when he came down here to this world, it says in verse 9 that he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and when we come back, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to read about how he came right to this tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he began to teach certain things. The serpent taught things uh, about God and about sin, which led the whole world astray. And then we're going to ask the question, are those teachings that the Bible says come, comes from the serpent, are those the very same teachings exactly that are found in witchcraft today? And we're going to see that they are. They're the exact same teachings, and we know that the real devil is still here, and we want to avoid his deceptions, and that's why we're having this seminar. So we'll be right back.
you have a Bible, I invite you to go back to the book of Genesis and let's take a look at what the truth of God's word teaches about the beginning of, of the world, about the issues between God and sin, and about the teaching of the serpent, and then we'll tie that in with what is being taught today by modern witchcraft. Genesis chapter 2, if you have a Bible, and if you look at verse 7, it's a beautiful verse about the beginning of the world and, and God making the first man. It says, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So here's a biblical description of the creation of Adam. And if you keep reading in chapter 2, if you go down to verse 16, it tells us that the Lord gave a warning to the first man. It says in verse 16, the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. God gave him freedom to eat from all the trees. Adam must have been filled with joy to be able to eat whatever he wanted, except God said in the next verse that there was one tree. Verse 17 says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God in his infinite wisdom and love, he made the world, he made Adam, he made Eve, he made a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and he said you can eat from everything, just don't eat from that tree. If you go down to chapter 3, in verse 1, it says the serpent was more cunning or subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent came into the garden, and really it was, it was Lucifer, the fallen angel, that was now working through the serpent to try to talk to Eve to get her to sin. And in verse 4, the Bible says, Then the serpent said to the woman, and he said, you will not surely die. God said, if you sin, you'll die. And the serpent said, no, you won't. Don't, don't believe that line. You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be what? You will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so this was one of the first two lies that the serpent told. The first lie was you can sin and not die. And then the second lie was that if they ate the fruit, they could be God themselves. You can be a god uh, or, or a goddess. Now, when you study the teachings or read about the teachings of, of modern witchcraft, here I've got a statement here from the book, The Truth About Witchcraft Today, page 146. It says, it is the processes at work within the Wiccan. It is the blossoming of the consciousness of the goddess and the god within that constitutes true Wicca. So true Wicca is teaching that, that people's eyes can be opened and they can realize that they themselves are actually God. And that is the exact teaching of who? Who taught that teaching? That's right, it was, it was Satan working through the serpent in the garden, the garden of Eden. Now let's go back to our Bibles and let's look at Acts chapter 26. This is a very powerful passage, Acts chapter 26, the 18th verse. Witchcraft believes, Wicca witchcrafts believes that, that the power that Wiccans get, they get through nature, but they also believe that it is through the spirits of nature. Or, or deities that work through nature. That's what they believe. Uh, Teen Witch, in the book Teen Witch, in the very back, it has a series of ads for other books here, and it talks about awakening the god and the goddess within you, and it also talks about how you can contact your guardian angel, you can meet your archangels in meditation, and you can talk to the deceased. And it's very clear that modern Wicca believes that the power comes from nature and the spirits of nature that work through uh, the techniques of witchcraft and come into your life and give you this power. That's what they believe. Uh, and again, if they don't believe in the, in the devil, then do you see the danger here? The danger is, there's a verse in Revelation, and I'll show you this before I go to the book of Acts. There's a verse on the screen, Revelation 16, 14, says they are the spirits of devils. Uh, witches don't believe in the devil. They believe the power they access is, is the power of nature, and they're opening themselves wide up to being invaded by the forces of Satan, and they don't know it. They don't know it. Now, if you look at Acts chapter 26, and if you look at the 18th verse, it tells us that there's not just one power in this world, but there are two. 
Acts 26, 18, Jesus told Paul that he was sending him to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith that is in me. Witchcraft believes that there is only one power and that it is a neutral power. Scott Cunningham, in his book, The Truth About Witchcraft, on page 39, says, the power that is at work in folk magic is just power. It is neither positive nor negative. It is neither good nor evil. And it is the intention and the goal of the magician working with it that determines whether this energy is used for helpful or harmful ends. So they believe there's just, there's just one power out there, and it's a neutral power. And if you access that power, and if you use it for good purposes, then you're a good witch. You're practicing white magic. But if you use it for evil purposes, then you're an evil witch. And that's basically the theme that's in the Harry Potter books and all the other modern books and, and movies that are talking about, talking about witchcraft. And yet in this verse, what does this verse say as far as how many powers are out there? How many powers are out there based upon the Bible? Is there just one power? Is it a neutral power? No, this verse tells us that there's two powers. And they're not neutral. They're personal uh, one of them is perfectly moral, and the other one is in, in extremely sinister. One is the power of God, and the other is the power of the devil. And God wants our eyes to be opened, are open to this reality. Witchcraft offers people power. They don't believe in the devil, and the danger is that they're opening themselves up to the power of Satan that they don't even believe in. That is one of the biggest dangers, dangerous of uh, of witchcraft. Not believing in a devil is about as smart as an African boy going out into the jungle at night and not believing in man-eating lions. Not very smart, is it? It's, it's extremely important that we understand what the Bible says about these two powers. And it also says in this verse that we need to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. One of the appeals of modern witchcraft is it offers people, people power, but they don't have to turn. They don't have to turn away from sin. And that is very appealing to the modern human heart, to just continue to do whatever you want and then get power in your lives. The Bible says that we need to make a choice to turn away from evil in order to have God's power. And that's very, very important for us to understand that we need to choose to turn away from the bad in order to receive the power that is, that is good. When you look at these different doctrines, these doctrines of, of witchcraft, Wicca, if you look at them carefully, the idea that, there is, that nature is God, that you can be God, that I can be God, that there is no sin, that there is no devil, that the power out there is neutral, and that everybody can access that power and channel it for good, uh, th these doctrines are really like like an iceberg underneath the water. There may be some things on the top that are, that are good, like appreciation for nature. That's good. But when you go down underneath and you study carefully the doctrines of modern witchcraft, they're like a big iceberg underneath the water that is extremely dangerous. It was what was underneath the water that sunk the Titanic. And it's the doctrines underneath the water that are going to sink a lot of people today who are dabbling in what they do not understand. They have no clue what they're really getting into. They're opening them, themselves wide up to the forces of, of Satan, and they have no idea that he's there at all. Uh, the truth of the Bible is there is a God. He's separate from nature. We shouldn't worship creation, but we should worship hid, him. There's a real devil who really tempts us to sin, and witchcraft says, don't worry about any of that because there's no sin, no devil, uh, and that you're God yourself. And you can tap into the power of God through the spirits, the spirits of nature. The Bible tells us in Luke 22, verse 3, that Satan entered Judas and he didn't even know it. And that's my biggest concern about kids getting into Wicca, thinking it's friendly, it's harmless, it's just white magic. They don't realize that they're entering an arena that is extremely dangerous and they can easily be invaded by supernatural forces by the power of Satan, and they need the power of God. Are you with me? Uh, this is the danger of witchcraft, and God wants our eyes to be open to this and to come to him to receive his power, his strength, and to sound the warning. And that's what we're doing here in Hour of the Witch. We're sounding a warning and calling people away from the power of Satan to the power of God. We'll be right back.
Wicca witchcraft teaches that nature is God, that we are God, that there is no sin and no devil. This book says something very different, the Bible. The Bible says that nature is not God, that it was created by God. There's a very definite difference between who God is and what he has made. It also says there is a real devil, there is real sin, and the whole world has yielded to the real devil, committed real sin, tried to become, we've tried to become our own gods, and that's the problem with witchcraft and with the whole world. But in the midst of all the bad news, there's the good news. This book is full of good news. In John chapter 1, verse 10, it has an, there's an incredible passage. The Bible says he, referring to Jesus 2,000 years ago, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world knew him not. And this verse tells us that the one that made the world, the creator of planet Earth, that he actually came down here, he was in the world, he walked the dusty shores of Galilee, and the world, when they looked at him, they didn't really realize who he was. And the incredible message of the Bible is that the maker of heaven and earth came down here, became a human being, and out of love for a lost world that has sinned against him, stretched out his arms and gave his life on a cruel cross for you and for me. I heard a story once about a little girl that was lost in London. She... She had been to the King's Cross subway station. There's a station there in London called the King's Cross subway station, and there's a cross there. And she was on an errand for her mother, and she got lost. And she sat on a street corner, and she began to cry. And a policeman on the beat walked by, and he saw this little girl, and he said, Honey, uh, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She was probably five years old. And as she wept, she looked at him, and she said, Because I'm lost. I'm lost. And the policeman said, Well, that's okay, little girl. I'll take you home. Where do you live? And the little girl looked at him and said, uh, I don't know where I live. She's crying. And then the policeman said, well, what's, what's your address? He took his pad out. He was going to write it down. Just tell me your address. And the little girl said, I don't know my address. And then he said, okay, well, give me your phone number, and I'll call your parents. They'll come and pick you up. What's your phone number? And the little girl said, I don't know my phone number. What do I do? And the policeman was getting rather frustrated, and he, he was about to take her down to the station as a lost girl, and he finally looked at her and he said, little girl, what do you know? How can I help you? And the little girl thought about that, and all of a sudden her eyes, her eyes lit up and she stopped crying. And she remembered that cross. There's a cross at the King's Cross subway station. And the little girl remembered that cross. And as she looked at the policeman, she said, Mr. Policeman, she said, if you can just take me, if you can take me to the cross... If you can take me to the cross, I can find my way home from there. And that is the message that this world needs. Our kids are confused. Lots of kids. Kids are dabbling into things. They have no idea what they're getting into. They're getting into witchcraft and Wicca, and they're opening, opening themselves up to evil forces, and they don't realize that there's a a beautiful God out there who made this world, who loves them, who loves us all, who sent his son, who stretched out his arms, embracing the world, and he, he died for every single one of us, for all the kids, for all the parents, for everybody, and it is through the cross that we can find our way home. That is the message of this book and not the message of witchcraft.